my name is Ben, uh, who I am. Uh, I grew up in Israel most of my life. Four years ago, I got here. And uh, a few months later, a guy uh, hit me up somehow on Facebook. He told me, I heard you know computers. Could you uh, build me a real estate system, have apartments? And I knew back in the day HTML. But I told him, yeah, sure. So a month later, there was a big uh, spaghetti code and JavaScript. Everything was up. And since then, I got into uh, developing. Uh, two years later, I discovered WordPress, and I realized everything I've done, I basically just reinvented the wheel, because there's already CMS is existing. You don't need to reinvent every, everything from scratch. So today, I want to uh, show how to uh, connect the data from the front end into WordPress and save a lot of time. And I will, and I will explain in which cases it's a, good, it's a good idea, and in which cases it's not, so, it's not so fit. Okay. What is WordPress? WordPress is a CMS to manage websites, meaning if we have a website, we always have the same, we have data, we have a user in the front end that wants to see the data, we have users that will log in and publish data, that is always the same. So WordPress is a CMS contact management system. 28% of the website in the world today, some say it's 50%, 60, but I will stick with uh, conservative numbers, 28 of the website in the web and WordPress. So very famous, very common. Uh, some people say, oh, WordPress is only for small blogs, it's not so big, but TechCrunch, BBC America, MTV News, Facebook Newsroom, WNBA, many other large sites, actually 50% of the 100 largest websites in the world run on WordPress. They have a special server called service name WordPress VIP, but many uh, websites run on, run on it. Okay. Ah, and for our, for our uh, related, it's uh, recently, two years ago, they launched the WordPress REST API, meaning every object in the WordPress database, you could access with a full REST for REST API, get the data, update data, delete it, and update. So what is the uh, pros and cause of uh, WordPress for developing? So I'll start with the downside, then I'll go with the uh, pros. So data storage, WordPress stores all of the data, in two tables. There's W post where you save the header of the, of the data, and then you have meta fields, meaning all of the data is attached. It will be in one table. You can see it here. These two tables, W post is uh, actual data. It will have the name of the post, the slug, the date, uh, the status, if it's published or deleted. And the post meta will have, for example, uh, if we have a real estate website, an uh, apartment will have the number of rooms, Price for rent, all of those details will be in, in the second table. In a classic database, it will look usually like this. You will have many tables and you will have listings, orders, payments, payments calendar. So if we have a, a web system that have until 100,000 records, 200,000 records, half a million, it could still run fast. If you have 10 million records and you need to do multiple joins, then you might consider other options in WordPress. But I've seen a, you, 10 million records, databases at one and sec very fast on WordPress. As long as there is no read, write, or conceive secretly, so it's fine. What else WordPress has? WordPress has a huge community, meaning if, if I'm developing in WordPress and I have a problem, an issue, I want to I wanna do something, I've never done it, WordPress has a huge community. Do, do any of you familiar with Stack Overflow? So WordPress has its own Stack Exchange website. It's called WordPress Stack Exchange, and it's every two minutes, one minute. I posted the question actually this morning. I got already four answers. From the top, there's people, people that develop WordPress heavily go into this website every day and compete with each other who answers faster, so very useful. It, uh, it has a WordPress REST API. It's web ready. What it means is web ready. Let's say I'm developing a view app or a client, and the client a week later will come and say, actually, I need a website too, to show, no problem, the website is already ready and up in the air. It's flexible and it has 40,000 plugins. So it means, let's say a yoga teacher comes and needs a website, all you need to do is download the plugin, there's many plugins of events calendar, you could hook up the website in two hours, it will be up and running. Meaning, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel, that I will say, we just need to spin it better. That's how I see WordPress. 
Okay, so what is, which endpoints we have in WordPress? So this is from the documentation. We have posts, we have tags. Tags help us organize the data. Like if we have articles in a website, so we could categorize them by all, a lot of tags. We have comments, we have media users. Instead of reinventing, registering, when I develop my CMS, so I sit like a week and white code, if the password matches the record in the database and there's only one record, log him in. We don't need to do it. WordPress does it for us. Okay, next slide. Okay, so I use the, uh, to save the data, WordPress has what we said, uh, meta fields, meaning all of the data, it will be saved in a separate table. So how, c but it could be hard if, uh, WordPress as default does have text field. So even if I have a date, it will show me the data in a text field. So there's a plugin named Carbon Fields. I use it a lot. And with a few lines of code, I could set, for example, a date of a reservation. This is from a booking system. So here I have a reservation. With these three lines, I set the data type. I set the data type is date. This is a name, the start date. So set visible in REST API. That will tell WordPress when someone requests a post send this field in the REST API. So we could see here how it works. This is how the admin of WordPress will look. This is an end date field. You could see how the date looks. This is how, if we will click, it will open an input with dates. This is a Chrome network tab. We could see the end date, how, because I said in the data, set visible in REST API, so it will be sent back. And if I will send to the server back in a post request, the field end date, with a, a different date, it will actually update the custom field back, meaning it's a circle. So uh, this is belong to the next one. Exio, so uh, Tavias, the guy that spoke before me, so he spoke a little bit about, he mentioned Exios. Exios is a really easy way to do a request. This is a classic uh, JavaScript get request. It's vanilla JavaScript. With Exios, it's this, much short, much more neat. So I use Exos, I recommend to use it. It does much more short and neat. So how do we authenticate users? We want uh, only a user that have permission to watch a uh, reservation on order to see it. How do WordPress does a circle to actually I know that the user is a user. So it has a system that it's cookie based, it's called nouns. So it starts like this. In the backend, this is a PHP file. I said that you could see here the nouns. W create nouns, it set a cookie that it hashed with a uh, words W rest. Every user has a different cookie. It, it won't be the same for each user. Then, it prints in the browser, this is the source of the page. It will print inside the script tab, a uh, variable WP API settings, and it will have a nouns with our nouns. Then, if I'll print it in the console, I could see this is a, the user nouns. Then when I send the post request in Axios, I send in the headers. Every, every uh, HTTP request has a header. So we send in the headers and nouns with a key of XWP nouns. Once WordPress will get that nouns, he will, know, he will know that the user, he will know his ID, he will know his permissions, and accordingly, he will do whatever he's supposed to do. If the user is only um, editor and doesn't have permission to uh, post new, new post, you will get an uh, error. You're not allowed to post posts in the website. Okay, this is the last slide. So, uh, have ever you ever posted media from Vue.js to the backend of any system? It could be complicated because we need to listen in the backend, save it to a folder, copy it, give it, give it a name, save the name in the database. In WordPress, we have a ready endpoint, the name media. All we need to do is use a form data component in the front end. And uh, I'll show you how we could do it in Vue.js, very easy, uh, and it just works. So we have here a form. The form has an have a, has a input type file. When we change meaning when a file is loaded into the input, it will run the function upload file. Then this is a Vue.js uh, script. We get the file from the event. We'll, we'll put inside the form that is a file. Then we you have your post request. So a post request, it's not like a get request that we just uh, send a URL and get data back. In a post, we could actually, we send first parameter as a URL, then the form data as a file, the config, 
has announced that we said before to be sure that the user is, a, is allowed to post. And that's it. The moment we send it, we will get back ID. We will get back something that looked like this. We get the image back. So WordPress that did all of it for us. So I really recommend if you're developing light front-end apps sometimes, try it out. It will save you a lot of time. Basically, you could forget about the back-end, except some a little bit uh, you need to set up in the beginning. But once it's up, you could set multi-types of data, no need to configure, except the carbon fields that I showed. You set a few fields, and that's it. You're good. Do you have any questions? So it depends. If you, if you set let to every WordPress website, if you'll go to any WordPress website that is in the latest version, and you'll put in the URL, WP JSON, WP V2. You'll see the title of the blog. You'll see the last, latest post. Because that data is anyway visible because the website is open. So it depends which data. But for example, if you'll go into the endpoint settings, you will get a message you're not authorized to, to, watch, uh, to watch the data. So you could send the headers. Then you'll, be, then you'll be authorized. You could see the data. But just to see posts, for example, you don't need to be. So it depends on the type of data you want to watch. Yeah, and you could do, of course, you could do custom endpoints. If you have a system and you want to do your own endpoints, you could do it. It's a few lines of code, and you could get data and send data very easy. Thank you very much. Have a good night.